The rugged splendour of the moors stretches for miles. It's a harsh, unforgiving landscape that supports few people or communities. But right at its heart is a unique RAF station, which has been central to our nation's defence since 1963. This is RAF Filingdales, its job quite simply to monitor our atmosphere. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year this place is watching. Checking out for ballistic missiles, but also looking out into space, monitoring 65% of everything that can be found in the low Earth orbit. I'm going to the top of the radar, which is some 8 storeys high. Below the rest of the station, home to 80 RAF personnel tasked with maintaining and operating the radar. They're helped by specialist contractors, many of whom have worked at the site for decades. Squadron leader Steve England is the officer commanding operations at RAF Filingdales and explained to me how it works. The radar itself can transmit a beam of energy out to 3,000 nautical miles. If we could see it physically today, what we would see is almost a plate going out over the horizon for early warning of missile events. And then if we're tracking objects in space, we put up a beam of energy and track that space satellite or piece of space debris through the skies for as long as we need to collect data on it. The radar, to use the jargon, is an active phased array. That means it's made up of thousands of these transmit and receive diodes positioned in a circular pattern on each side of the building. Each diode has the power of a microwave oven. The operators can direct their beam of radar power where they want. As Steve explains, Filingdales is just one link in a chain of radar sites. And our two sister sites, our main sister sites, are located in Greenland and Alaska, and their BMU site, Ballistic Missile Early Warning Sites 1 and 2, and our US name is Ballistic Missile Early Warning Site 3. We all contribute data for missile warning and the Space Surveillance Network, and that data is then transmitted back to the United States and to the UK. And that radar data is gathered and forwarded in this room, deep in the heart of the complex. This is the uh, space operations room. Um, it's manned 24 hours a day with our daily operations. Uh, we typically have a five-man crew uh, uh, on our, uh, one time uh, where we uh, conduct our uh, primary and secondary missions, uh, ballistic missile early warning mm. and space surveillance uh, as our secondary mission. Each member of the team has been through months of bespoke training, and that's done on site, upstairs. This is the, uh, the training facility. Uh, it's almost an identical replica of downstairs. Um, so we will run simulations from this room uh, and train our crews. Copy that. Yes, yeah, seen there, that's France Way. Precautionary 1-1, open then, please. Copy. Five to ten ballistic missile events happen each year. Right, so report now. Copy. This is operations. Site report now. Site report now. Virtually always they're test firings, although they're always monitoring for the unexpected. Uh, if we get a simultaneous launch now, you need to... job of the Filingdales team is not to decide what to do about any missile launch. There's no big red retaliation button to push. Simply they have to check their systems are working and let the US and UK authorities know about it, all within 60 seconds. It takes months to train to this level, and the students go through 20 scenarios and written exams. A cool head is required, and after initial training, the performance of each personnel member is constantly monitored. Away from missiles, space is the key concern. Specifically, the 21,000 items of space debris orbiting the Earth at 17,500 miles per hour. This radar can track 800 items consecutively, down to as small as a soft drinks can. The reason? To keep the 1,000 orbiting satellites and space stations safe from a possibly deadly collision. Well, recently we, we were tracking an object and we did some analysis on this piece of space debris, and that was on a collision course with the International Space Station. So then we flag up our observation our, and our analysis to the Joint Space Operations Centre and then they can make a decision as to whether or not to manoeuvre the International Space Station to avoid a piece of debris. So here, Filingdales, North Yorkshire can mean that the International Space Station gets moved? Yes sir, indeed. That's pretty cool. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Filingdales is certainly a fascinating place. Until 1992, three iconic golf balls housed the radars. They're long gone, but as the site looks towards its 50th anniversary later in the year, its future is assured. A vital piece in the international jigsaw that is radar surveillance. Tim Cooper, Forces News, RAF Filingdales.